So most of us learn through emergencies. How do the wake up calls come? They're tough, right? And emerge and see is you emerge from your sleepwalking state, your somnambulance, your programming, your habits inhabited. We are in habit dead. We are dead in our habits. We're addicted to certain thought patterns, certain ways, just the way we've been imprinted. Monkey see, monkey do. Humans are mostly monkey see, monkey do. We see and do what our parents do, what our teachers do, what we are programmed and imprinted to do. So how can the wake up call come? except sometimes by two by four to the head, spiritual two by fours to the head. I call it in the book, in my book, the Listening to the Sun. I'm going to be a little harsh today. I'm going to be a little strong. But it's an important lesson along the spiritual path to get that you cannot rescue. You cannot be the cat lady. You can't rescue all the animals in the neighborhood. You can't rescue all the humans. Because it turns into a stinking mess dysfunctional mess. Everyone has to carry their own backpack. Doesn't mean that we don't help people. We help them when they need it in the struggle. We help them during those times when they need to be lifted up. But it's very different enabling people, letting them feed off your energy versus they need help. It feels really good when you're really helping somebody when God would help them, when Source would help them, when the Tao. The Tao helps everyone. It helps every bird, every animal, everything to live and sustain itself. It does it beautifully. But it also lets certain things die. There's a right time to die. A right time for them to not be nourished. Now, a lot of bleeding hearts are going to think this is cruel. But along the spiritual path, you're going to have to learn to live and let live and also live and let die. You're going to have to let those who want death. There's nothing wrong with death. No one dies. There is no death. You always wake up somewhere in some dimension in some place. So one of the things on the spiritual path that we have to learn is what would God do in this situation? Does God let people die crack addicted in the gutter yes she does yes he does yes the Tao does yes the universe does why because sometimes it's right to help and sometimes that being wants death A woman recently told me she'd quit her job traveled back to help her dying mother her mother was caught in a pharmaceutical hell she helped her recover from all that. She's negating giving up her own, the daughter, her own life, her own dreams, her own following. I'm paraphrasing some, but this is as a general example. Um, to take care of, to rescue her mother on her deathbed, the mother on the deathbed. Months later, her mother finally tells her, I don't want your help. Let me die. It's a right time to die. There's no death. It's like the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna's the pearl of the Orient, the ultimate Mahabharata, the ultimate story in the Bhagavad Gita. Now, all this can be misused, I understand, and misinterpreted. But try to feel the deeper part of it, you know. Krishna basically tells in that story, the ultimate story, Krishna, Christos, the Jesus, the Logos of the universe, the heart, the loving God. Krishna, Krishna, it's the same being, really. Tells Arjuna, pick up your sword and cut their bleeping heads off. And the closest we get to in the biblical thing is the Ecclesiastes. There's a right time for everything. There's a right time to kill. There's a right time for peace. So all the bleeding heart spiritual stuff. Shiva is perhaps a better model. Buddha, the true story of Jeshua ben David, Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Thomas, there's two instances where Jesus, quote, kills people. A young boy when he's little and an older man. And some birds, some sparrows, he kills them. And then brings them back. Now, what's going on? You have to look at the deeper story. There's 
It's not this worship of retaining the physical body. That's disgusting. That's like, you know, the, the stench of the cat lady's house. Look at what we're doing with our civilization. Just housing people in retirement homes, packed up full of drugs, 8 to 12 drugs each that they're feeding off the trough of the welfare Medicare system. They're basically semi-alive zombies for what? It's insane. Life, that's not life. Yes, life is precious, but there's a time to move on because then you get to wake up on the other side. May, you know. So one of the things we have to learn is to see deeper. What would God do here? Real Tao. What does the universe want to do? I watched my beautiful dog, Bentley. We take, you know, he's an unfixed male, so technically they don't want those. They're, they're, they're not allowed in the dog parks. Why? Because there's too much life. Everyone wants to neuter everybody else, whether it's you want to neuter your partner in their marriage or in your relationship. You know, why, why would you want to do that? If you're an irresponsible dog owner and you don't have the time to be with them and make sure, you know, neutering them, by the way, as an aside, vasectomies for dogs, you don't have to neuter it, right? wonder why nobody's doing that. Because we want to shut down the life force. So you're going to have to learn along the road of this spiritual path that there's a right time to not help. When is help truly help? Often people know until I hit rock bottom, all my help, I just use those people. So we learn the hard way too. Alcohol is perfect. Meth is perfect. Right? Now, I'm not suggesting, of course, we should keep it out and there should be public health and we need to, you know, not let every little child try drugs that are going to hook them. Of course not. But insistent souls with free will that want to try these things, that's the game. Take it up with God. Take it up with nature. You know, if you feel led for the compassion to do it, the story I told Joy years ago. Because mothers, especially the, the feminine, wants to rescue all the babies. So they're subject to the cuckoo bird principle. Someone will dump you with their babies, and you're the one taking care of them. And as long as we keep enabling that system, no, the, the people that create the babies don't get, have to take care of them. You know? An example of the bleeding heart gone wrong. True story, by the way, in Arizona. When I first met Joe, I was trying to point out, you know, being Cinderella and you taking care of the load for everybody else doesn't help them at all. People need to have their own emergency, their own wake-up call, which is why people say, after they've been through that, they say, oh, it was horrible, whatever, whatever it took for them to hit bottom to actually search inside themselves, to try to find a real hookup connection with spirit, the Tao, God, source, call it whatever you want, their own higher self. They need to hit whatever emergency they need to hit. Divorce, bankruptcy, cancer, the holy trifecta of awakening. Bring it on. Let them have it. Get out of the way. Spirit is trying. There's so many stories. Somebody, I just heard a story of someone said, before my daughter was born, I heard her. I told her, look, you know, I could feel her as a spirit. And I said, your mom and I are not going to be staying together, you know, uh, it's going to be a rocky road. And the spirit that wanted to be born to this couple said, I know that. I want to go through that because that's going to wake me up. Protecting people from their wake-up calls is getting in the way of what God sourced their own souls are trying to do sometimes. There's a right time. Learn to discern when to help, when to, when to let them go and, and find it on their own. Some of the best people I know have hit the lowest points and come out with a reconnection to God's source, me included. People thought I was suicidal. I wasn't, but I was sincerely looking to have a real dialogue conversation with God, with source. And I love, was it fun? No. You know, at the time. But in retrospect, it's always, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. 
Don't get in the way of people's wake-up calls. Show me source. Show me intuition. Show me heart. What would Jesus really do in this situation? What would what would the Tao do? Look at the society we're creating. We're creating literal zombies. Nature does not do this. Nature does not create zombies, and nature is not cruel. She's as sweet as they come. Darwin survival of the fittest, which is what he of the 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 strong, which is what he originally said had it as the survival of the strong. There's many, many examples of lionesses adopting antelopes. It's not always full-on murder in nature, not at all. It's a much finer nuance. You can trust nature. You can't trust the guilty mind of humans. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when at first we practice thinking we know better than God's source nature. So realigning with source makes it all work. Nature, when left alone, creates incredible beauty. That's not by accident. That is by design, of course. There's a design. You know, there's a higher intelligence. So allowing the wake-up calls for others is a necessary part of the spiritual journey. Knowing when God does that, source does If you believe in God's source or something higher than yourself that created you, does it let you get away? Does it coddle you? Now, I've been guilty of this. This is why I'm teaching it. So I learn it, really get it. I teach it, so I get it. Every teacher teaches what they most need to learn. Sure. Let others go through their wake-up calls. Don't get in the way of your kids' wake-up calls, of your own wake-up calls. Because when you wake up, and you spend your 40 days in the desert, you come out a renewed being. Every, every person who's ever accomplished something will look back fondly on the times of their wake-up calls. At the time, they may be squealing and screaming like stuck pigs and babies wailing at God, why have you done this to the universe? But that's uh, how we work out our awakening. So ask next time, what would really be helpful here for this person? Sometimes that is letting them stew, letting them stay, letting them hit rock bottom, letting them all, all the way to physically dying. So what? Real shamanic initiations, a certain percentage of those shamans would not make it back. They would die during the initiation. Is God evil? Is nature evil? Is source evil for letting that happen? Not at all. There is no death. You always wake up somewhere. Now, I know I open myself up for some criticism from the coddling crowd that wants spiritual awakening to be all coddled and safe and sweet. How can you truly awaken? In order to get past the physical addiction of fear in our subconscious and fear of survival in the physical realm, in order to transmute, get past that, you have to pass the physical. You have to face it. Whether it's St. Anthony, Hilarion, a hundred or so years after Jesus in the Egyptian tomb, having to go through his of doing it, his awakening, and actually having the walls materialize these jackals and so forth, or St. Francis going through his ordeal, or Yogananda, or any yogi, or any shaman here in Arizona, the old ways, the Apaches. I saw once, once hiking in the hills around Phoenix, Arizona, I could, I could see that the tribes that used to live there, they would have one of their rituals was, was uh, being bit by the rattlesnakes. That was an initiation process. I'm not promoting suffering and the old way of that we have to have it be difficult. That when we're zombie asleep, like we still are en masse on this planet, the wake-up calls will be divorce, your child on drugs, bankruptcy, cancer, being fired, you know, from a job you shouldn't be doing anyway. It's your own soul that steps in and kicks you in the ass and says, time to move on. And at the same time, compassionate. During my personal 
you know, getting my ass kicked by the universe, which continues, by the way. Death as an advisor. You know, Carlos Castaneda would say that Don Juan would tell him, have death as an advisor. Keep the angel of death, the spirit of death, me who is only a transformer. Keep yourself honest by keeping that always as an advisor on your left or right shoulder. It's the same thing as saying, what if this was your last day on earth? Real spiritual awakening is awesome. Namby-pamby, cotton-swaddling, fake little teachings will never satisfy. You have all eternity to decide and choose when you want to awaken. Or your soul is stepping in and deciding for you and giving you the emergencies, getting you to emerge and see what's really going on. Surrender and submit to your own awakening path. It's the only thing that's ever going to satisfy.